Welcome back to The Dangin, everybody. On today's episode, we're going over a new UST projector from Epson. This is the laser-based LS800. Stick around. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me here on The Danger. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe below. Like I mentioned before, we're going over a UST projector from Epson. This is the LS800. I'm gonna go over a list of all the features that this UST projector has to offer, show you how to set it up, do some gaming, show you some daylight footage, some nighttime footage, and really give you all the details you need if you're interested in buying a brand new laser-based Epson LS800 projector. So thanks for joining me here on The Danger Today, and let's get going. Coming in at a price point of around $3,499, you can get the Epson LS800 in two different colors, black and white. The white version I have here has a brightness estimated at 4,000 lumens. It's an ultra short throw laser projector, and the lamp or true laser diode is estimated to last roughly 20,000 hours. It does broadcast a 4K Pro UHD resolution with full HDR 10-bit with 16-step adjustments and HLG support. The projector weighs in at about 27.6 pounds and the dimensions are 27 by 6 by 13. The LS800 is a huge improvement from the LS500, just on design alone. It's sleek, minimalist, and the fact that you can hold it just 17 inches away from the wall to project a 100 inch image and only 20 inches away to do 120 is a game changer in UST technology. The design of the LS800 is smooth, consistent, and it also has a speaker grill in front which is removable to expose the Yamaha sound system. There are three speakers, two tweeters and a subwoofer in front as well as an air filter device and the bottom left, keeping that laser lens clean and your fans running optimally. The fans and air induction and air exit vents of the Epson are placed all over the device and they hide them very well. The sound level uh, I have in the pictures here are pretty minimal. Uh, Epson rates them at 32 decibels, but this is what I got right next to the device. Powering on the device is super easy. You either hit the power button on the remote to turn it on or you hit the power button on the right side of the Epson to turn it on. It shows that it's on with a little blue indicator light right on the top of the device and it takes about 10 seconds to boot up. Powering it down is just as easy. You hit the button once on the right and it shuts down in about one second and even turns off the fans. Like other UST projectors powered by a laser, it has a safety shutoff feature, so if you walk in front of it, you don't get your eyes burned by the laser, and it automatically turns off the image. Moving to the right side of the projector, you'll notice that there is a latch underneath for all of the input connections. This has access to the focus dial and all of the different inputs that come with the device. USB-A, HDMI 2 with ARC, HDMI 1, HDMI 3 meant for game mode, a USB-A, an optical port, a DC out for two amps, a headphone jack, and a service port, all above the power cable. And the cool thing is, is that this is recessed within the projector, so you can put that cover panel back on and hide all of the wires very neatly behind the projector. The LS800 remote has pretty much all the features you need to run the device. It just doesn't have the things that a typical Epson remote comes with, and it doesn't have that nice build quality or backlight that I'm used to. So it's an okay remote, but it's like a standard Android remote. Setting up the image of the LS800 is super easy. I used my Akia Screen's CLR4 ceiling light rejecting screen, and it's 115 inches. All I did was jump into the manual. I looked at the flexible picture option, which is a button on the remote. I fit it to the rectangle of the screen, and then I used corner correction to get it to fit within the bezel of the screen. The 
user interface for the Epson LS800 is actually Android based. Now I've used this with several other USTs, including the Vava and the BenQ V7050. And it's an okay interface. It's pretty nice. It's straightforward when it comes to setup. It has all of the different features you can want uh, in order to get the image that works best for your media room. While I usually prefer the technical screen like of other Epson projectors, such as the LS12000, this one has pretty good projector settings. It has picture mode, sound mode, installation, settings, information so you can update the software, and then it also has a quick Bluetooth speaker mode toggle. Epson did a really nice job including all of the different picture and adjustment mode settings in the Android interface. It really had everything, a color mode, color temperature, noise reduction, super resolution, contrast enhancement, dynamic contrast enhancement, gamma, et cetera, et cetera. All of these features were adjustable. You could make changes to really help it fit your media room needs, whether you have a bright room or a dark room or you want to see better HDR or you don't care as much about HDR and you want a little bit more black level. It had all of those great features that you could uh, adjust and get it exactly how you need it in order to enjoy the different types of content. I mean, you could really enjoy things like SDR content in 1080p all the way to 4K HDR and you can even add some motion smoothing if you wanted to. When you get into the HDMI settings, I found that pretty much everything was there except for eARC, but that was kind of listed going into this review. Um, it had things like HDMI CEC, you had the ability to power the projector on and off, you could do a high altitude mode, a suspend mode, a shutdown mode, all of those different features built right in and you can access them easily from the remote. You can even use the Epson as a Bluetooth speaker. So if you don't want to put the image on at all and you just want to play some music through that Yamaha system, feel free to connect your phone to it and play some tunes. The projector had tons of customization options when it came to the sound as well. And I'll go through some of that a little bit later here in the video. Another cool thing about them using the Android OS for this device is that you don't have to plug in an external dongle if you don't want. It has a built-in uh, Google TV interface, so all I had to do was log into my Wi-Fi, pull up all the different apps in the app menu, and load my favorite app and start watching what I wanted to watch. So in this case, I put on YouTube and I found some good content to show off all of the different HDR, SDR, 1080p, 4K, and other content. Of course, for this demo, I wanted to make sure that it was as dark as possible. So during the filming, I just covered up my windows and you can really see the difference that this thing makes when you get it in a low light area. 1080p SDR content looked really, really good. The colors were bright, the image was bright, the 4000 lumens really do it justice. It's a little bit soft when it comes to 1080p resolution, but that's much improved when you switch over to 4K, which I think most of the content everybody's watching, if they're watching this channel, they're probably using that type of content anyway. With that said, the 4K HDR content was awesome. Uh, the colors were vivid, the brightness, everything really popped, um, and you were able to adjust all that stuff even more so if you wanted to. So these are just kind of some basic settings I use, and just look how great and natural these images are. Even when I had to flip the lights on to do some stuff in the room and I still had the projector going, the image came through great, which really leaves me with some high hopes that people can use this for what it is, a laser TV. You know, they can put it on in the background, they can have a light on here or there and do some stuff while they have their movie on and not be too worried about the picture being affected. So let's get real though for just a second. Where this projector really shined was that 4K HDR, even 60 frames per second movie viewing. Uh, the star of the show is that brightness, that contrast, that HDR. This thing really is explosive and you add in something like the sound system and you can hear pretty much everything and see pretty much all those details 
that you want from your 4K movie, uh, just like you have a home theater set up all out of this small projector device. With that said, the sound system settings are no slouch either. There's plenty of different modes to select from, whether it's theater or something where you wanna hear the voice better. Um, it even has the option to do virtual surround, uh, extend the bass, so make that a little bit deeper, maybe change the different sound outputs or even adjust the latency if the voice is off from the picture. It has a lot of cool options and it's really helpful to have those adjustments on the fly. The Epson isn't just a movie projector though, or TV. It's a laser TV that's meant to be used in all different forms of entertainment. In fact, the gaming portion of the LS800 is one of the better features that a UST projector has ever offered. And being said that, uh, it has 1080p, 120 hertz refresh rate, 4K, 60 HDR options, and super low latency around 20 milliseconds. So using it as a gaming monitor or gaming TV, if you will, is awesome because now you have a 115, 120, 130 inch screen to play these super immersive games on. Whether you like to play a first person shooter or a sci-fi game like I am here with Star Wars Battlefront, it really takes advantage of the black levels, that this projector offers along with that immersive sound from the Yamaha sound system so you can get that full sci-fi feeling playing this game. One important thing I want to preface with playing games on this Epson LS800 is that you have to use it in that HDMI 3 input which is labeled game but you also have no ability to customize or change any of the settings for that output. And what I mean by that is, is in order to keep that 20 millisecond uh, low latency input lag, it actually turns off all of those other features like frame interpolation and brightness changes, contrast, dynamic, things like that, that would otherwise affect the latency of the image being broadcast. Here's an example uh, of what happens when I plug it in uh, when I plug a game console into the HDMI 2, for instance. Um, first off, I get an error that shows uh, there is no signal with the uh, game controller icon. And then what I noticed immediately, and this is playing Battlefield 2042, was that the input lag at least doubled. So just to reiterate, to get the maximum gaming capabilities out of the Epson LS800, you want to plug your game console into HDMI 3. You want to press the gaming controller button on the bottom left of the remote, and you'll get all your great features like 4K 60 HDR, 1080p 120 hertz capability, and you'll have that ultra low 20 millisecond latency. All right, let's go over the final pros and cons of the Epson LS800. The pro that I first noticed was how bright this laser light source is, 4,000 ANSI lumens, super awesome. You can use it in tons of lighting conditions. Obviously, it has that three LCD chip, which means no DLP rainbow effect. That's another good pro. Remember, this has Android TV built in, so you don't have to attach a dongle. That's another plus on this side. You don't have to attach a device if you don't want to. The input lag, that's my other favorite. This has very low input lag. You can game on this thing. You can really enjoy a 1080p, 120 hertz experience and play some competitive games on the big screen. And then finally, that sound quality. The Yamaha system sounds really good. If you don't have a sound system and you're just looking to upgrade to a big 100 and so inch screen to start out your home theater, this thing has it all. It has the large image capability close to the wall. And then also it has that great sound system to start out. So you don't have to build up your whole sound system beforehand. And then finally, like I mentioned before, you can get that projector nice and close to the wall. This has been a big problem with USTs in the past. You got to pull them far away. You got to move your cabinet out. It has to be much lower than the screen. This fixes a lot of that. And I think they're only going to improve more as this uh, technology uh, gets better. So yeah, ultimately those pros are my favorites. The cons, obviously there's no 3D support. Sorry guys, those who are into 3D and watch a lot of 3D movies, this projector is not gonna work for you. There's also no ethernet port, so you have to do everything that you wanna stream over Wi-Fi unless you plug in an external device. And then of course, 
HDMI 2.1. I don't know why in 2023 we don't have a UST with HDMI 2.1 yet. Um, 4K 120 hertz would have been ideal, but we just don't see it. So those are my favorite things about this, and uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the review. All right, everybody, hope you liked today's video about the Epson LS800. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I'll leave a link so you can purchase this unit from Epson's website in the description below. Thanks again for joining me here on The Dangin, and we'll see you guys next time.